Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought we so. Live, we live just outside of Nashville. Okay, um, I used to go up there all the time, but I just first time I've been up there was or two weekends ago when Georgia got or when Georgia played FSU in that bowl game. Where are you I'm, at? I'm a Georgia boy. I, I'm in Blairsville. You familiar with that area? Well, I think you've played yeah. Hiawassee a lot, hadn't you? Because Hiawassee yeah. is just. 20 minutes up the road from me. Oh, yeah. I know where Blair for you. Oh, yeah. Um, you don't remember probably because it was in 2018 or 2019, but you were on my show when I had, when it was just audio, you know, phone call. And uh, we had the best time. <laughs> well, good. We, we did because, because and you might, I, I'm from, I actually grew up in commerce. Really? Oh, yeah. And so, um, and then I went to church at Rogers Baptist right yeah. down in, you know, know what I'm talking about? I know exactly where you're talking Yeah. And so I always heard about growing up, T. Graham Brown. His parents lived right up the road. Down there at Rogers, right there at the crossroads? Yeah. S small world, ain't it? <laughs> so that's where our farm is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I always heard. And, of course, we now. Got, we got some land about a quarter mile from Rogers. You're kidding me. No, man. Um, Where my grandparents grew up and great-grandparents and all right there at Rogers. I mean. Well, I, I, that's all, I always heard that. And, there, used uh, to be, there used to be a store there in an old white building. Yeah, and now it's uh, just a barn. Or last time I was down there, it was like a just a barn and a little house. Someone does, they remodeled that little small little house directly across the street from rogers that's amazing yeah. yeah i mean that's i spent a lot of time down there boy that's what i thought and uh because i've grown up in commerce i graduated from the high school and um uh, i'd always heard oh yeah I, I, my cousin was or my neighbor he's cousins with t ground but i heard that a lot so you either have a bunch of cousins or <laughs> well that's where they're all from <laughs> that oh and down there, the other side of Isla. Oh, uh, yeah. Danielsville my, or Coma? My daddy, my daddy grew up on 98, right there at the Jackson-Madison County line. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, well, right like they had the fork. You take the fork to go to Rogers. Coming down 98, I go that little fork right there off. I don't know what road that is, but right there at the Jackson-Madison County line. The Nice Commerce Road. That's it. My mom, and daddy, my mom and daddy's house is on the Nice Commerce Road. What about that? Now that's see, I I, almost, I know I've heard that see, that's before. Where all our uh, our family farm is. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, I rode a John Deere tractor all over those those places. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I was going to ask you. Do you well? Do you know? I think you're related to her because I grew up at Rogers. I mean, as a kid, and Elizabeth Stevenson. I can't remember, man. Um, I, I I can't remember. Elizabeth, I don't know if you were Kendi. You weren't Kendi any Stevensons. The, well, I could have been. I don't remember. <laughs> well, that's my, my mama's folks are from the other side of Isla in a little crossroads called Shiloh. Oh, I know where Shiloh is. I know that little area because I, I grew up off ninety eight on uh. Black's Creek Church Road, right? It's yeah. called Mize Road now, but yeah. I, know I, I was, yeah, that's where I was. So, um, but anyway, my whole, my family, we are from Blairsville, but my parents raised me in commerce. That's where his job took him. So, um, but now I'm in Blairsville and, um, I quit doing this show in 2020, in December of 2020. And then long story short, uh, God blessed me with an opportunity to, to do it. But this time with, uh, a machine behind me and so i signed a a deal and now i've got this pretty cool show going on right now it's uh it's doing really well and well, i'm so Good. excited that you were able to come on yeah man are you having fun the most fun i've ever had that's and what, what counts man about 40 minutes into my interview with uh billy dean a few weeks ago he he looked at me and said 
you are doing your calling, aren't you? And it, <laughs> it was, it, hey, it, I'm telling you, it encouraged me because I, uh, he could just tell my passion for it. You know, I have a passion for the whole reason I do this show is, uh, and I was telling Lori this, my heart and my vision is 80s and 90s country given a space for the 80s and 90s country icons and legends like yourself and Lori. Just give them a little space and let people know, hey, they are still touring. Uh, these are the, the the reason that you even listen to country radio today. You know, these are the people that paved the way, you know, for in that yeah. generation. And I think 80s, especially mid 80s and 90s are the two of the best decades of country music, period. You know, I hear that all the time. <laughs> it, it's crazy, isn't it? I, I do. I, I feel that way. And it's on resurgence. We're, I man. did a radio interview this morning. They were talking about the same thing. Exactly. Oh, for real? Yeah. Well, I, I'll try to talk it's, about something that no, you don't ever get to talk about. <laughs> I'll talk about whatever you want to, man. Um, that's funny because Lori, Lori told me, she goes, I like you. You, you actually talk about good stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm so tired of being on autopilot talking about the same thing over and over, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, uh, well, go ahead. I might throw, throw it in the interview. interview well, go. But, I'll, you, uh, don't forget uh, it. Are we interviewing right now? Uh, yeah. Well, let's, we'll go ahead and so, start it. So I got the show on Sirius XM, right? Oh, yeah. And... I've been doing it about five and a half years now. And I play live cuts from artists' live albums. It's called Livewire. So, oh, yeah, Livewire on Series 6 on Prime Country. Yeah, I do uh, six artists per show, and I play a couple of songs each and going from concert to concert. Like I was just talking to Pam Tillis yesterday. Oh, sweet. And we were talking about the 80s and 90s country and you know it's you and i were talking about uh, Lori morgan saying um she hears the same questions and all that when i yeah. interview somebody i try to ask them stuff that that i don't get asked all the time you know? oh yeah that's smart a lot of us you know when you ask us what time it is we'll start on well i started out when i you know you're so <laughs> yeah you're so used you, to it somebody all you got to do with me basically is ask me a question and i go off on my whole deal you know that's great that's it, uh it's usually we're so used to knowing mm -hmm. what somebody's going to ask us mm -hmm. that we just go ahead and beat them to the punch yeah yeah that's exactly what that's that's cool. I, I've had um, I've had every so far every artist on this new season. They've told me that, um, and this isn't blowing smoke up me at any. It's it's all God. I'd so I give my credit to. But it, they've just said this is this has been different. Well, this is something I've really enjoyed. Mark Miller, you know him. Sorry, Brown. He he told me this is a uh, this is something pretty cool. I I, I I'm. So glad I got to talk to you, and we because we talked about all kinds of stuff. So that's what we're going to do with T. Graham Brown. Yeah, um, well, it is cool, and, and Mark Miller is a really good friend of mine. You know, on the Sirius XM show, I interview, I do one show a month, and mm -hmm. they air they air it ten times during the month. Oh wow! And, okay. And then if you're a a Sirius XM subscriber, you mm -hmm. you can download this uh, free mobile app they have. And it opens up 200 more channels. And also, oh. it has an on-demand feature. So it has a search bar. And you can just type in T. Graham Brown and Livewire pops up. And you can, uh. listen, you can listen to back episodes of Livewire. So basically, you can listen on the app. You can listen yeah. to whatever you want to uh. at any time you want to. Not just me, but anything. You're right. And... So I've been doing this five and a half years, I guess, something like that. But I've interviewed over 50 artists, man. Wow. And I usually interview them for 20, 25 minutes. So I've gotten pretty good at interviewing. But, you know, you were naming some names. Uh, 
imagine I have not repeated one artist in, in over 50. I've interviewed over 50 artists from, from the prime country era, which is uh, yeah. the prime country channel plays music from 1980 to 2000. So mm -hmm. it's the 80s and 90s. It's incredible. So it's amazing to me that there's that many dang artists out there because I've interviewed and I still it, interviewed Gary Morris or or Marty Raven with Shenandoah or Steve Earle or Amy Lou. There's a whole bunch of them I got on my list. That I, I didn't. I, man, that's that's crazy. That's good. So, so, yeah. so you, what I'm getting at is you have a lot of artists to go, buddy. Oh, I do. I, I get to do this for a little while longer. That's awesome. <laughs> um, that's cool, man. I love it. Um. The Sirius XM live wire show though, it is, it is, uh, that's killer. And what, now when does it air? What, when does it air main, the main air times? Is it on? It air, man, they. So it's all the time. Like I said, it's 10 times a month. They, okay. They, they air it. They might air one at three in the morning. Right. Or Monday and Monday afternoon or Saturday. Yeah. Morning. You know, they got a, they got it all staggered. Right. So basically, so the average uh, Sirius XM subscriber has a chance to hear it. To hear it, yeah. Point. You're but, right. But like I was saying, if you if you got if the people would download that app, then they yeah get, they can listen to Live Wire whenever they feel like. It. Okay. But the Sirius is, XM app. Okay. But they they are at ten times a, a month, and mm -hmm. it's just different days and different times. Have you had a blast doing it? Yeah, man, it's real That's easy. Cool. It's real easy, and I know everybody. Yeah, and everybody has always said yes, and I got everybody's phone numbers, and I just called yeah. them and asked them to do it, and we all help each other out. Man. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, we all got our own things going on, and we right. like Larry Stewart was on last month, and I interviewed Pam for the February show. Um, yeah, yeah, I've. I've had some great conversations with folks. Man, Larry Stewart's cool, isn't he? Oh man, I've been knowing him forty years. See, that's He's... another that's another thing. I've been knowing these people almost forty years now. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you have to go to downtown to do it? Well, some t yeah. Most of the time, I go down to the, the Bridgestone Arena where mm -hmm. there's studios, but they're moving their studios now into the Batman Building down there. So I've been doing it. Oh. I've been doing it from the house the last couple of shows, and then oh, okay. Um, when COVID was going on, I mm -hmm. did them all. I did them all from the house, so I have, wow. I have the capability of doing it. That's cool from home too. Yeah, and uh, you said Pam, she'll be the February guest. Yeah, she's she's fun. awesome. It was fun talking to her because she's a different kind of artist because she's a show business kid. Right, she that's all she's known, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, most of the artists are are not show business kids. Right. So we, we got to talk about Mel Tillis a little bit and mm. everything. So Pam's experience, her life experience is totally different than Larry Stewart, for instance. Larry right. Stewart, I asked Larry Stewart when the first time he ever got paid for singing and in a band. And it was let restless heart opening up for Alabama at the Murphy Center with ten thousand people in there. I mean, he had <laughs> never, he had never been in a band, so you know that's, most, that's crazy. Most, most of these artists grew up, you know, they might have started singing in some little high school rock and roll outfit, right. or something Like that, you know. Yep. But Larry, but not Larry. Larry was a baseball player all through his life. Yep, yep. I I knew that. I met T Graham. I am a or Brown. Uh, I'm a nerd when it comes to eighties and nineties country. I, I have always been that way. I had every tape and CD and well, I everything. know pretty much. I know pretty much all about it. <laughs> I love it. That's what I'm saying. So when just you hearing you talk about it, just it gets me excited because I, I I love it. And I so I was going to ask you, um, where'd you put your dues in? Was it Athens? I started out in Athens at a Hollywood yep. Inn. Oh, okay. Yeah. I went. I went to high school in Athens. 
Oh, okay. And then I then after high school, I went to Georgia. And that's where I met Sheila. And, oh, okay. But I had this buddy in high school named Dirk Howell. He could play the guitar. And when we were in high school, somebody's mom and daddy would go out of town and we, we would all go over to their house and have a party, you know, and then clean it up so they, yeah. would, so they wouldn't know we'd had a party there. But <laughs> but sometimes Dirk would bring a guitar and he and I would just sit around goofing around singing. And then we started going to Georgia and I, I was trying to play baseball at Georgia, but I wasn't getting to play. So I was really frustrated about it. And I had a friend from high school that worked at the Holiday Inn in Athens, mm. which, which is right there. I think they've torn it down now, but it was, this would have been the fall of uh, 1973. So that's when I started singing for a living. And so it's been, I've been doing this 51 years for a living. Good and night. so anyway, this boy, worked at the front desk at the holiday inn mm -hmm. and he he called me up and said man they got a bar upstairs it's just sitting there empty and they they never have anybody playing in there but you and dirk ought to go over and sing this guy a couple of songs and see what he says and so we went over there one afternoon and played a couple of songs and the guy hired us and we didn't have a on we, the spot on the spot and for five nights a week uh, from nine till midnight every night, and we didn't have any songs worked up. We didn't know how, we didn't <laughs> sung in front. Of, you know, we we didn't know what we were doing, but but we just started doing that. We learned some songs and started doing that. We would we got a huge student following. All the kids started. Coming, oh, I bet you know the the kids that were our age. Yeah, started coming over there and and drinking beer and, and listening to us sing and we would sing at night and get up in the morning go to class and and then sing from nine to midnight or nine to one i can't remember it seems like it was four sets a night man i did that for three years um and we were man we wound up we were making a lot of money yeah i bought my first house when i was 19 years old I had a I had a Corvette and an Eldorado Cadillac, and I always thought I was a big shot man. So uh, I was big dogging it around campus and uh, having a time of my life. Did y'all have a name or was it? It, it was just it was just Dirk and Tony. My name's Tony Brown. Yeah, Everybody yeah. Called me Tony, so it was Dirk and Tony. What about that? And we did that for three years, and I came home one day, and. Uh, my outfit was I wore uh, khaki pants, 100% cotton button down starch shirt, and bass <laughs> weekends. I was a fraternity looking. We played for all the fraternity and sorority kids. So that was my outfit. Wow. So I, came, I came home one day and turned the TV on, and there's a local PBS station. It, it's, it's, I think it's called WOG, University of Georgia. Yeah. I think it's called UOG and it's Channel 8. And they were running a documentary on David Allen Coe. And I never had heard of David Allen Coe and never had seen David Allen Coe. And he was the wildest thing I'd ever seen in my life. So I, I looked at it, I watched it, and I thought, man, I'm going to be that guy. So I broke up with Dirk and put a country rock and roll band together and grew my hair out long and grew a beard and got a tattoo and got my ear pierced. And I was David Allen Coe for three. <laughs> that's where the T. Graham Brown started because I didn't want anybody to call me Tony because I didn't want them confusing me and Dirk. Dirk oh, and man. Tony. So I rocked, man. We were, we were the only guys in town when it came to country rock. And we did that for three years, and we played Atlanta. We played all over the place. We were good. We went down to Capricorn uh, Studios in Macon and cut some stuff. And I mean, we were good. And then Urban Cowboy, the movie came. Oh out, yeah. And everybody and his brother put a country band together, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I wasn't unique anymore. Mm. So I quit doing that and I put together a band and I called it T. Graham Brown's Rack of Spam. 
And all it was was a soul band. We didn't play anything but soul music, straight mm. soul music. And I did I I did Dirk and Tony from seventy three to seventy six and T Graham Brown and Rio Diamond was the name of my band. Uh T Graham Brown, Rio Diamond and Rio Diamond, okay. Yeah, and then I did that for three years, and then I did the Rack of Spam from 79 to 82, and that's when Sheila finished up her master's degrees, and that's when we moved to Nashville in the spring of 82. But, wow. But the Rio Diamond thing, is we came to Nashville to um, do some demos. I had a buddy from high school that had moved to Nashville, and we went over it. Dang, this is odd, man, because it was Mel Tillis' uh, publishing company. Mm. Uh, it was called Cedarwood, I believe was the name of it. It was Mel's publishing company. And a friend of mine worked in that little demo studio in the back of that building. It was on 16th Avenue. Mm. And so we went over there one night. I remember, man, it was snowing. I can't remember what year it was. It must have been 76. And it was snowing, and it was Super Bowl weekend because we recorded our demos on that Sunday, the Super Bowl Sunday. Ah. And right across the street was Capitol Records, and I went over there and had my picture taken in front of that Capitol Records sign, and danged if I didn't sign the Capitol Records a few years later. So it was really weird. What? But... Yeah, I still got that picture of me standing in the snow out in front of Capitol Records, and it, it's from 1976, and I wound up signing with Capitol probably in 84, something like that. But I did, I did, Dirk and Tony was a beach music. That's what we played. Okay. We played beach music mm. for the fraternity and sorority kids, and then I played country rock when I was David Allen Coe for three years, and we played all all David Allen Coe and Waylon and uh, Willie and Johnny Cash, oh, yeah. all, all that album, outlaws. That's all we played. That was that was all we did. Johnny Paycheck, just total outlaw stuff. Oh man! I, I wrote some songs. I wrote some outlaw songs, but but that T. Graham <laughs> Brown Rio Diamond. Yeah, I was at that Mel Tillis's uh, publishing company. And it was closed. It was a Sunday, and I I was rummaging through everybody's office just to see what was in there. Yeah. And then I don't know whose office it was, but there was a stack of albums on the floor, and I was thumbing through them, and I I saw this album. It was called Big Bertha. It was Bud Brewer and the Brewmasters, and it was they were on RCA Records. And I, it was, and it was called Big Birth of the Truck Driving Queen. And on the cover, there was this big fat woman lit with a with a trucker's cap on, with a cigar in her mouth, leaning up against a, a diamond Rio tractor. A tractor. Uh. It was a truck. It was a diamond Rio truck. So I just flipped it, and it was R E O diamond. And I flipped mm. it and called it Rick, my band Rio Diamond from now. I stole that album and came <laughs> home. And I learned I, Bud Brewer's great for anybody listening. Go look up Bud Brewer on YouTube. He's real Bud country, Brewer. real country. And so I stole that record. And I stole a couple of other albums. I can't remember what, but I, but that's how I named my country rock band. Rio Diamond was from an album cover that I stole out of Mel Tillis' publishing company when we had gone to Nashville one Sunday to do some... Do Have you told Pam that? No, I totally forgot. I need to tell her that. Y'all just talked, what'd you say, this past weekend or yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, That's yesterday. a great story. <laughs> and um, uh, I was talking, to, I interviewed Marty Rowe the other day, and I've been knowing him for Man. 30 years. And we were talking about their band, Diamond Rio. Right. And they named their band after Diamond Rio Trucks, except they spelled their R I O uh -oh, on yeah. purpose so they wouldn't get sued. So basically, uh, Rio <laughs> Diamond, Diamond Rio got our name from the same truck. Uh, that but, is but something I, else. But I beat them to the punch, Bob. 
about seven or eight years. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> Man, uh, that's I love that story. I love Marty Rowe too. I used to try to sound like him when I was about ten years old. <laughs> I did. I, that's well, he, I, he was a good one to try to sound like. You ain't kidding. Um, I saw them just a couple months ago up here in Hiawassee. They they were great. Yeah, um, well, they are great. Let's see. Moving right along, I got a couple more things. So when you got to capital records eventually you know when you signed yeah because i i me and my my buddy we were listening to you a couple nights ago we were riding around up here in the mountains and um the just you know of course i've always known your songs like you know but just thinking about some of the bigger hits like darlene to me you had i don't know is that you had a you stood out like your your style your that there's i even told matt i said do you hear that soul uh in his voice and uh but even the instrumentation it's it just you stood out to me and did did was well, that... a, hey brit i'm a soul man you are That's what i started out doing i i'm a, i am a soul man that moved to nashville yes and therefore i, I put out a record they my record company was in Nashville and they released it to country radio. So all of a sudden I was a country singer. I was oh. I, basically a soul singer more than I was a country, country. singer. Of course Man. I did. I did a, you know, my country rock band. I, I'm a good country singer. No but, doubt. But I'm a soul singer too. I'm a rock singer. You I, are. I, I, I do, man. I grew up listening to everything. I grew up listening to, to, I listened to a station that didn't have a format. It was a little AM station and they would, they played everything. They, it wasn't a country. Mm -hmm. It was a, a everything station. They might play Johnny Cash and then they might play the Rolling Stones right after that. And Otis Redding right after that. And Aretha Franklin right after that. And Jerry Lee Lewis right after that. I mean, it was all over the place. So I listened to everything and, you know, I cut all, uh, well, I cut most of my hits in Muscle Shoals with the Muscle Shoals rhythm section. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That I did not Muscle know that. Sh yeah, I cut my first two albums in Muscle Shoals. Did you have crossover? Did it, did Darlene or uh, no, I never, Tell It Like It Used To Be, did it cross over to rock or pop? No, no, no. Don't contemporary. They, they, they tried to do that they they put out dock of the bay in germany oh, okay uh, i cut dock of the bay on mm -hmm. my second album and and they put that out they were going to try to do something like that in europe but it never did catch on yeah i just it's it's funny just listening looking back on certain songs that's why i was asking about those two songs especially hey I man just... you know you know what i do now this is this is about the most fun thing i've I've ever done. I went down to Muscle Shoals mm -hmm. and I, I recut 14 old soul songs that were either originally cut in Memphis or Muscle Shoals. And I'm calling oh, wow. the album from Memphis to Muscle Shoals. So I got the Muscle Shoals rhythm section, the new, what they call the new Muscle Shoals rhythm section, uh, but they've been together 30 years now. Right. So I, they're they're they incredible. <laughs> So anyway, I, I I tracked down at Fame Studio down, mm -hmm. and so I cut all these six, sixty soul songs, and I and I cut them exactly like they cut them in in sixty seven. You can listen to this record, and it sounds like it was cut in sixty seven. So I cut all these soul songs. <clears throat> so I then after I tracked them, and I got came back to Nashville when I was listening to them. You know, I just got them home how long ago was this um uh, it ain't out yet it's, oh so this is new yeah it ain't out yet oh man this is exciting okay no, go ahead so well, they're gonna start putting out uh releasing tracks from it next month yes so okay. anyway, so anyway um i was talking to dwight yoakam on the phone see all of us came out the same time man keith mm -hmm. whitley and 
Keith Willie and Randy Travis and Marty Stewart and Steve Earle and me and Patty Loveless. We all came out basically the same year. Our first our first singles at radio were basically the same year. Right? Real, we were, it was real close, you know. I, I think I I might have been a year ahead of Keith. I can't remember. And my, and but anyway, we were all right there together. Yeah, that's awesome. And we all we all knew each other, and we all loved each other, and we still love each other. Mm. And we still and we still talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And so I was talking to Dwight Yoakam on the phone. And he asked me, I was telling him about this project. And he, yeah. asked, he asked if I had cut this song, I'm Your Puppet, that was a big hit uh, with James and Bobby Purify, these these guys back in the 60s. It was called I'm Your Puppet. Dan Penn and Spooner Oldham wrote it. Anyway, I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. And Dwight said, can I sing on it? And I said, sure, you can sing on it. I'd love to <laughs> sing on it. So Dwight went in the studio in Hollywood and and sang a duet with me and then sang harmonies and i thought well dang so then i called up tanya and tanya said yes and she's singing on one then i called up winona and winona sang oh, oh and I what called, i called up sammy hagar and he's singing on walking <laughs> the dog with me and then i called up sam moore from sam and dave who's 87 years old and he's he singing. Not- He's singing uh, Who's Making Love, the old lady, while you's out making love. Then I called up Eddie Floyd, who who wrote and sang the original Knock on Wood, and he's singing Knock on Wood with me. And then I called up Little Anthony from Little Anthony. And the, yes. And he's 80-something years old, and he's singing on one with me. Then I called up uh, uh, Delbert McClinton, and he's singing Mustang Sally with me. Oh, man. So this, this record... It's the most fun I've ever had. And man, you ought to hear it. It's killer. I can't wait. I mean, I, this is it's, awesome. It's got the Muscle Shoals horns on it. It's, I mean, it's a throwback soul tribute record. Oh. This just, it's great. It's the most fun I ever had, man. I mean, it probably won't sell 10 copies. Oh, but, it will. You know, it, the, today is a whole different ball game. It is. Than when I came along. Mm-hmm. And so it's all about streaming and all that, you know. So hopefully we'll get some good streaming numbers. Oh, you will. Uh, I have no idea how it works these days, really. I haven't I haven't put out a, a, a new studio album. I, I, the last really studio album I did was in 2014. And it was a gospel album. The gospel was, album, yep, I've heard it. It's called Forever Change, and I yep. had some, I had some good people singing on that one too. Mm-hmm. But but I hadn't done like a a studio had a studio record out in dang ten years. Wow, so, this so, is big. This is a big big deal, man. I love that. Well, what do you it, can you tell us the title of it? It's called From Memphis to Muscle Show. For, oh yeah, you did tell. That's that is an incredible title, by the way. That draws me in right there. Well, it's that's what it's. We cut some songs that were originally cut in Memphis that were hit. For, for instance, well, we cut. I, I recut Dock of the Bay. See, in like the, some of the Memphis songs was uh, uh, "Take Me to the River," Al Green. That's the mm. one. That's the one. Wine on us singing on. Walking the Walking the Dog, Rufus Thomas. That's the one. Sammy Hagar's on. Mustang Sally was cut in Memphis. Um, knock on wood was cut in Memphis, so there's a lot of Memphis songs on there, uh, and, and the rest of them are Muscle Shoals songs. So that's why I'm calling it from Memphis to Muscle Shoals. That's perfect. I, I, that is a the you ought to even call it. You ought to do a tour called that. <laughs> hey, I might, man. I, I mean I'm, that, that. I feel like this is a. Uh, I'm. I got goosebumps when you started a, listing I, off all that. Brit, I, Brit, I'm telling you, man, I, I ain't, I ain't bragging. I'm just, this is a great record. Oh, I, I <laughs> believe it's, it. It's my favorite record I've ever done. I, it turned out just like I wanted it. To, it sounds just like I wanted it to sound. Golly. It's, it's just a perfect project for me. You're going to have a blast singing some of these songs on the road, aren't you? I've been singing them all my life. Well, yeah, yeah. Now you, yeah. Let me ask you this, so because I know how, you know, why Winona has this uh, incredible, soulful 
you know, it ain't just the, what people think the, you know, countrywide. She has a soulful voice. So what did she, I bet she blew the, blew it out of the park. I tell you what I'll do, man. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do it just for you. When we get through this, I'll text you a Dropbox link to it and you can listen to the whole. Oh my gosh. Don't even tell me that. I'm going to go build a fire. I have two buddies coming over tonight. We're going to listen to this record. I'll send it to you when we get through talking. Oh God. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Billy Dean did the same thing for me. He goes, I'm going to text you something here in a little bit after the he did. Yeah, well, you'll like this. It'll be good. Just crank it up loud. Oh, it is. I'm going to crank it up loud. My, I have, oh, man, I love Hey, you know, there's a woman on hmm. there named, there's a woman on there named Betty LeVette, and she's probably 76 or 7, and she's from Detroit. She grew up with Aretha Franklin, and, and I called her up, and she's doing uh, this Aretha Franklin had a hit on this song called Do Right woman do right man that dan penn wrote it too um but anyway she she just did a you know who randall bramlett is from Ad- yeah okay yeah. so my randall, buddy plays with him randall's the reason i moved to nashville randall's the guy that told me to get out of athens and move to nashville really i, I kept asking randall i said how do you get to be a star how do you get to be a star that was what i'd ask him and then he finally uh, told me, he said, I'll tell you how to get to be a star, Brown. Get your ass out of Athens, Georgia, mm-hmm. and move to New York, L.A., or Nashville, and don't ever ask me that question again. So he's really the guy that gave me the courage to move to Nashville. Wow. But anyway, Betty LeVette just cut an album of nothing but Randall Bramlett songs and just got nominated for a Grammy for album of the year on it. You're so kidding she, me. So she's on my new record. Wow yeah it's uh, yeah wow. <laughs> yeah i know man it's all good it's all I, and it's good and good for randall uh, yeah it's real good for randall no doubt do you know tom ryan Bass I player i don't know but see i've been gone from there so long man well he's oh well, i didn't know he played he's played with randall and I don't sean know, mullins for a while I don't, but, know, I don't know who all's in randall's band or uh, yeah I hadn't seen Randall in a long time. Oh, I bet. Hmm. He's still at it, though. He's still. Oh, playing. I know. I, I watch. Yeah. His, I watch his videos. All oh, time. yeah. I'm um, a huge Randall Bramlett fan. I'm a huge Randall Bramlett. That's fan. awesome, man. I've that's, been knowing Randall a long time too. Really? Yeah. Um. Well, I guess so. Um. What What about your your sister Tanya? How What was she like on the record? Did she? She did a great job, man. What song did y'all? Cut? They're gonna release. Actually, they're gonna release that song first. And next oh wow! Time, I think they're gonna just start putting one a month out. And yeah, and the Tanya duet, I think, is the first one they're gonna put out. <laughs> Gosh, I'll send it to you. And on, and on this Dropbox thing, you know, at the you'll have to look at the very top of the thing. It'll it'll have the name of who the other artist is. Oh, okay. Because if you don't have that information, you won't know who you're hearing. Well, I'll know. Uh, I'll know Tanya and Y for sure, and Delbert. You, yeah, you'll know, but I, but you might not. You wouldn't know who Betty Levette is unless I told you who it is. I'm excited about listening to her now, though. Betty Levette's great, man. That's that's awesome. She's one of the best uh, female soul singers ever. Oh, that's but, awesome. But she's a she's like a cult figure she's never she never was her she had a single out in 1962 uh, but i don't think it was ever a hit i don't think she's ever had a really big hit and now she's nominated for a grammy yeah the album's called levette i mean that's all it's all randall song (laughs) that's pretty impressive (laughs) yeah it's it's a cool record oh man i'm so i am so excited about that um your website your online store, I went to it right before we uh, got on the show, um, and it is not only is it well done, but you have a your online store's got some uh, some goodies on it. Well, we got all kind of stuff on there, man. You, you do, know. man. And uh, I just I want people to fly my colors and listen to my music. Green and red, all about it. 
I Red. love that the the bus is what is the best. Oh, you talking about the bullet? That's yeah, right. yeah. The bullet. Yeah. The, yes, the bullet. Bullet maintenance. <laughs> it's, the, it's the full name. See, I had a bus. My first bus that I bought, I bought from Mark Miller, Sawyer Brown. Oh, okay. And uh, he, it was originally an Ozzy Osbourne bus. And you're kidding. No, and it burned up. It was a real weird story. Uh, this, this Ozzy, you ever heard of Randy Rhodes that played guitar for Ozzy? But anyway, they were down in Florida, and this bus was parked at this mansion out in the country, and and they were out joyriding in a plane and and showing off, and it ran into the house, and it caught the house on fire, and it caught the Ozzy Osbourne bus on fire. Yeah, but they they redid the bus, and Mark Miller wound up with it, and then I wound up with it. What about but, that? But I named I named it Bullet Maintenance after the Andy Griffith show. Barney went to the bank one time in one episode, and Ace of the Guard had these bullets with mold on them, and Barney was getting on to him about his mold colored covered bullets, and Barney pulled his bullet out, and he said. Now, Asa, there's bullet maintenance. So we, <laughs> we, we named it bullet maintenance because we were trying to maintain our bullet in the charts all the time. So oh. it, was a, it was a double meaning. It was, That's awesome. It was a two meaning deal. So, uh -huh. that, so you own your own bus? Yeah, since about 1987, something like wow. that. Wow, yeah. A lot, a lot of... Uh... You yeah, guys own your own now. That's that's good. Know, you don't have to lease it. Well, buses are expensive whether you lease them or not. But yeah, the good best thing about my bus is it's paid for, so I don't have to. But you all the yeah. time, they, even new ones, you all the time working on them. They're just one. Oh big, yeah, one big machine. There's something always going wrong with them. Yeah, I, uh, your bus is cool, man. Uh, I, I know. <laughs> I see uh, from the you know all the pictures and everything the. It's, it's well, a they, lot. I like the colors. Pla they plastered my face on it enough. I know that. <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't have anything to do with that rap, really. Uh, I like it, though. It's, well, I yeah, love I'm glad, it. I'm glad. It's got well, my, my face on there a little too much for me, but that's okay. Your personality shines on the bus, though, because I know <laughs> you are known for your uh, awesome uh, jackets that you wear. I mean, the, the colors, the, 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 you know, you, you, you are an entertainer and I love it. So does anyone ever come up to you and say, uh, anything about your, your jackets? Cause you, you know, you're all not, the time. yeah, all the time, yeah. But, but that's Sheila that does all that. No way. Sheila dresses me like a third grader, man. She lays my clothes out on the bed just like... Oh, I thought you meant she makes, she designs and makes your outfits. She does that. She, oh, wow. She doesn't actually make them, but she designs things. Yes. Yeah. She's always been in charge of my wardrobe. Well, it's cool. I, I think it's cool. Cool. I got shoot. a couple of Kenny Rogers <laughs> things. that When I was on tour with Kenny Rogers, I did about 300 shows with Kenny Rogers. And oh, wow. He would turn me loose. He had a tractor trailer that was nothing but clothes in it. It was like oh, one man. big truck of clothes. And he would turn me loose in there and let me get stuff every now and then. So I still got some Kenny Rogers stage stuff that that he had custom made. Man, for real expensive stuff mm. and real real cool. And it's just good to have mementos like that. George oh, Jones. Yeah. George Jones gave me the coolest jacket. One of the coolest ones I got. Mm. Yeah, but but she got rhinestones on it. No, it's like a it's like a Picasso painting. Oh, Vegas. Sheila was Sheila standing here. She, he bought it in. La, he saw it in Las Vegas, and he told Nancy. He said, "Man, that's T. Graham right there. I'm getting that for him." George, oh. George was like a daddy to me. Oh, oh man. George, George was one of my best friends. Mm. That that sends chills over me right now. Um, the possum. Yes. That's, that's cool. I didn't know that about y'all. I that's I, of course I don't know a lot. I'm just I'm learning. But I, that's George, awesome man, that y'all. George, George treated me like a son. He called me son. He, mm. he, George and I, we would we were drunk together and sober together, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. I work with George a lot. That's cool. 
Did you learn a lot from him? He teach you a yeah, lot about but, the business. But, you know, just hearing him saying, you know, mm-hmm. no, he didn't teach me anything about business, but I did several duets with him uh, on my albums and his albums, and yeah, we were very That's awesome. We were very good friends. He, George Jones, was the one and only. The CMA with- yeah, we won a CMA award. You know, he let me sing on that. I don't need your rocking chair. Oh, that's right. You are on that. So, oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> the possum man. Hey, I got a great picture. I'll need to text you a picture of the day we we recorded that. We were in Woodland Studios. It was during Fanfare that year, and there's a picture. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, there's a picture of me and Tritt and Mark Chestnut and Mark. And Joe Diffie and all standing around the mic, and George is standing there with us. The day Man. we recorded it. Hey, um, I, did I, I'll need to send you a couple of pictures of me and Keith, too. Oh, man, you should. I, <laughs> you golly. Love, when you get them, you got to text me back, though, and tell me if you like them or not. Oh, I will. You care if I send them to Jesse or Zeri got them? No, I already sent them to him. Oh, okay, cool. I sent, um, him, I sent him to him a few years ago. Oh man, that's that's pretty special. He, uh, mm. um, you know, man, Keith, Keith and I were like brothers. You know, Keith and I were out on the road together. Oh, I didn't know that. All the time. So Keith and I were out on the road, mm-hmm. and we came home. This would have been probably eighty. Well, he died in 89, so it would have been in 89. Um, I was going to say it was about the Darlene, time Darlene was a hit. Uh, We came home. We'd been on the road. We came home. We were going to take a couple of days off and head back out to the road. And so he had a manager named Jack McFadden at the time, who was a good friend of mine. We were all friends. We talked to each other all the time, on the phone and Mm. all, all the time. So, uh the phone rang i was at home and the phone rang and i can't remember what time it was it was early she was telling us early in the morning anyway it was jack mcfadden and he said i said hey hey jack how you doing he said keith's dead and i said man that ain't even funny don't say that and he Mm. he started crying he said no man keith died and and then i started crying and and then later we found out what killed him and mm. and it was a horrible day and and uh, Jack Jack said I can't face all these cameras can I send them to your house so I said yeah I guess so all these mm. news people showed up at my house and I had to be the face of the Keith Whitley tragedy ah wow yeah mm. I know it was crazy it was terrible Oh, uh, have you and Lori? I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday, man. Have it you and Lori like, ever talked about that? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, well, yeah, we've talked about it. Man. Too. Yeah, I was on the news and mm. had all these news trucks and and all. Yeah, it was a bad thing, man. Mm-hmm. It, was bad, it was a bad day. Was I was a, ten, and I remember the day I heard about it. It was a real bad day. See, Keith and I were real bad to drink. We drank together. Mm-hmm. We were we were bad. We were we were we were bad. We about got kicked off our labels because of it. I mean, oh, it got so. Yeah, they they sent, had talks with you. They sent us to meetings. Yeah, we'd have to go to these psychologist group therapy sessions and sit mm. in there. And all we were doing was looking at our watch, waiting for it to get over, so we could go get a drink. We weren't interested in getting sobered up mm. one bit. Mm. All we all we wanted to do was party, mm. and it wound up killing Keith. And, mm. And it, you would have thought it would have knocked some sense into me, but it didn't, man. I just doubled down. Mm. It, it was a crazy, it was a crazy deal. It was mm. really a sad, sad. Keith Whitley would have been one of the biggest stars ever, like Alan Jackson or George Strait or any of them. Keith Whitley would have been as big, big a star as I ever was. In '89, he how how big was he at that? Point. I mean, well, he was, he was, I he was think on the he, rise, wasn't he? I think he just had like his fifth number one. He was mm-hmm. zooming. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he was a superstar. He was, he was zooming. Man. 
Hey, I, yeah, man, I'll send you. Uh, yeah, I'll send you a couple pictures. So excited yeah. about that! I yeah. told them all. And about. a book coming out. So book. Yeah. All what? An autobiography. It's called "I Tell It Like It Used to Be." Is that going to be in twenty four? Yes. Yes. What? Yeah. Why didn't we talk about that? Well, I don't know. Well, That's you exciting. Have a copy of it before, and you can read it. So. Has uh, have you announced that yet? Does anyone know? Uh, no, no. It'll, be, it'll probably be even, uh, by June. We're finishing it by up June. right now. Yeah. Um. Guess what I got to tell Lori that she had no clue. I dropped the news on my show. What? Uh, I said, uh, when we were closing out, I was like, well, you know, in, in June, the Opry is going to have a Lori Morgan celebration night for your 40th anniversary. And she was like, huh? <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said, please tell me that I, I wasn't supposed to tell you that. But <laughs> she goes, oh, it's okay. But... <laughs> I said, you mean I got to drop this on you? And she goes, yep, first time I've heard it. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, you know, her book's coming out this year. Oh, good. Yep, and uh, her, they've already scheduled, I don't know when it's coming out. They're still working on it. But when it comes out, uh, they're letting me be the first interview. I think we're going to do an in-person yep. interview, an exclusive. So uh, I'm excited about that. Excellent. We just might have to get you as an exclusive book release too do that. <laughs> do that. um but anyway y'all are awesome i love talking to y'all i can't wait to see y'all soon um y'all got any georgia dates sheila or do y'all know we don't know yet but we, okay well we just played georgia last week we were in gainesville uh, at the boot barn yeah saturday yeah. night i was there a couple weeks or a few weeks ago shoot fire what a neat place it was it is I, it's very nice and there's well, like there, oh yeah yeah the boot horn's cool a bunch of my old high school buddies from athens showed up that i hadn't seen in 50 years man did they yeah it was oh great. that's cool i saw Susie bogus there not too long ago yeah we we had a good time yeah the sound's good did you think the sound was good in there yeah, well, I didn't hear the out front sound, but everybody told me it was good. Yeah, it's stage, it's really good. The stage sounded great. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, man, um, for coming on the show. I'm excited about this year for you. Um, Sirius XM Live Wire. It's on Prime Country. TGramBrown.com. He has an awesome online store. You can check out tour dates there and so much more is coming your way this year i hope god just continues to bless y'all for real t graham and Thanks, uh, but it's been it's been fun it's always nice talking to a georgia boy you got it man go dogs go dogs and i'll uh hey don't forget to send me that i won't yeah i'm so excited we're about to build a fire and listen to it all night long i promise you'll have <laughs> you'll have it in five minutes Oh, I'll text you later and tell you. I can't. Uh, the first two I'm going to listen to is uh, Tanya and Why. Well, you're going to have to listen to them one at a time. You'll see. Oh, okay, I'll go through it. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Get the Dropbox. You'll. you'll I'll see. let the I'll let the album take me on the journey it's supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, man. <laughs> I'm just. I'm so excited. <laughs> you can listen to them whatever order you want to hear. Oh well, bye, Sheila. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. I'll see y'all soon. We Thanks, look forward buddy. to meeting. God bless you, ma'am. Okay. All right, y'all too. Bye. Bye.
Doing now. 